Yes, uh, I'm Professor Longo. I'm a professor of gerontology and biological sciences at USC. I'm also, I direct a lab in Milan on uh, oncology and the longevity. Uh, calorie restriction was essentially something very simple. What happens if you just eat about 30% less? Mm -hmm. and, 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 the, uh, and the results were extraordinary, but they were also problematic, meaning that there was lots of benefits and, and diseases, but uh, then the person would be made to uh, look anorexic and, and that uh, caused lots of problems. Uh, and so what we did in the next, let's say, 20 years was to, uh, how can we get these extraordinary benefits with, of calorie restriction without the problems of calorie restriction? And uh, uh, I think now we, uh, we succeeded in the longevity diet. Uh, the book was really about putting, to, putting these 25 years of, of work that I've done, and, uh, but not just my work, but really the work of, of many people that I personally collaborated with and uh, um, and put it in the book in a way that uh, people can start utilizing it. Certainly, I used it myself for, for decades, and, and I just felt that it was time that everybody else at least had an opportunity to read it and decide whether that's something that they want to also do. Well, traditional fasting uh, is, uh, I always say it's a word that doesn't mean anything. It's like saying traditional eating, um, it, it just, there is a million different versions. And what happened in the past uh, uh, is that um, fa fasting came around every 50 years or so, and then it disappeared because eventually somebody gets hurt uh, and doctors will, will go against it. And, and, and this whole um, field uh, uh, goes away. So what we try to do is uh, to uh, figure out, uh, like for eating, what is it uh, about fasting that is helpful and it doesn't have any side effects? Um, and that's where the fasting meaning diet uh, uh, comes from. Uh, it, it is about uh, uh, content and so nutrients and the understanding of what I call nutrient technology. So what is the connection, let's say, between amino acids contained in proteins and uh, TOR signaling, IGF-1 signaling, so these genes that I referred to earlier, uh, or sugars and PKA. So that was uh, what we worked on, and that's where the fasting making diet comes from. Mm. Uh, lots of understanding of these connections, but also understanding of, for example, what makes somebody full or what, makes so what protects someone from passing out uh, because maybe the salts in the diet are too low or, or what could exacerbate somebody that may already be vitamin B12 deficient. And then you, uh, let's say you put this person on a five day or 10 day water only fasting and you bring them over the edge, right? So these are all things that uh, we uh, had to address to, uh, to begin to now uh, move this into mainstream medicine. I mean, it's not quite there yet, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly moving in that direction. And so now, for example, fasting, some type of fasting is the, is the most used uh, dietary intervention for people under the age of 34. Uh, just to tell you how uh, popular now is getting in the U.S. and worldwide, but uh, I think for this to, to stay around, uh, we need to uh, standardize it and we need to really uh, focus on the standard way that medicine has worked all these uh, uh, you know, centuries and not try to improvise uh, because improvisation uh, is going to lead to another failure. Exactly. Right. Um, so you mentioned a lot about the aging process and particularly how that intertwines with um, DNA, but we actually have a question in our chat room um, that asks, we hear a lot about the aging process, but what is actually happening at a basic level? What problem does our DNA have? And then I'm going to connect it back to you by saying, what problem does our DNA have? And then how specifically does the fasting mimicking diet um, aim to alleviate or to perhaps, uh, yeah, to basically help those issues? Yeah, our DNA doesn't have any problems. Um, you know, our DNA is uh, the result of billions of years of, of evolution, um, and it's, it's fine. Uh, now, some people's DNA is worse than other people's DNA, meaning that you could have mutation, for example, BRCA1 mutation that Angelina Jolie has. Uh, these are the type of mutation that can... Uh, that can give you uh, cancer, basically, or they make it much, much more likely than everybody else to get breast cancer. 
So some people have that problem. Now, if the question is about what problem does the DNA um, accumulate, that's a different question, meaning that, uh, of course, during aging, uh, everything in the human body gets somewhat damaged, and uh, the DNA uh, is one of the uh, DNA uh, is one of the molecules that are damaged by this, this process, and eventually this DNA damage can affect the cellular function and the function of the organism. Uh, so the fasting mimicking diet, the job of the fasting mimicking diet is really about allowing the body to fix itself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I always say, if you cut yourself, uh, the, the body is very much able to fix this problem. And a couple of weeks later, you don't really see any uh, of the original wound, right? And, and I always thought, is it really likely that after 3 billion years of evolution, mm -hmm. we do not have a way to repair the inside of the body? We just have a, a very sophisticated way to repair the outside, but not the inside. Uh, so the fasting making diet, we believe, and lots of our evidence, is that it is probably the most powerful way to do this self-repair. So uh, activate the ability of the body to get rid of damaged DNA, get rid of damaged protein, get rid of even of damaged cells and replace these damaged cells with function, new ones, functional ones, uh, in part or in large part by activating stem cells, but not just, uh, but not just by a stem cell-based mechanism. Wow. What is the most important age um, that you would have to say for someone to start doing this type of uh, controlled mimicking fasting in order to have maximum benefits throughout their life? Yeah, I can tell you we've, had, we've been having meetings uh, uh, just to take it to the extreme. I just had another meeting yesterday with uh, people uh, from the, uh, U, uh, U, uh, not USC, but uh, Los Angeles Children's Hospital. And the discussions are about uh, uh, type 1 diabetes, but mm -hmm. also type 2 diabetes and obesity. Mm -hmm. uh, can we intervene in children um, uh, that are maybe uh, very young uh, uh, with these fasting mimicking diets um, to uh, control obesity and, and reverse the course, right? So there's a study that came out recently showing that if children uh, are overweight between the age 7 and 13, I think they had about a 40% increased chance of developing diabetes lifetime. Mm -hmm. And if they were overweight between the age 7 and 18, they had a fourfold increase in uh, uh, diabetes, uh, diabetes uh, risk uh, lifetime. And so, um, you know, we are now uh, considering doing clinical trials with uh, several children's hospitals, both in, in Europe and the United States, um, to use the fasting making diet. Uh, but of course, you know, our focus... Uh, is an adult mm -hmm. and um and so um we think that uh probably somebody even 25 years old uh, uh could do the fasting making diet a couple times a year uh and um and then uh, really the fasting making diet should be based on the need meaning that um if somebody is obese and they have a high cholesterol high blood pressure high uh fasting glucose level mm -hmm. they might have to do this uh, once a month uh, under uh, some type of medical supervision. And, uh, but if somebody is a 30 year old athlete and they're mm -hmm. perfectly healthy, they have a pescatarian, uh, ideal, uh, longevity, everyday diet, uh, uh, again, um, maybe a couple times a year is uh, sufficient. Perfect. And that actually was going to lead into um, my follow-up question was, how do you accommodate the fasting mimicking diet for those who are quite active and do need kind of a more, uh, more of a caloric need than, say, your average sedentary person? Yeah, so the, the big difference, I think, about what, we, uh, what we're doing and what everybody else is doing is that we're telling people uh, you don't really need to change anything, meaning that uh, half of the book tells you what the ideal lifestyle is, right? But mm -hmm. the other half of the book says, I understand that some people are not going to change anything. Mm -hmm. And so if you're an athlete, you're going to keep doing what it is that you always done. But so many times a year, you have to take a break. And for those five days, uh, do the fasting making diet and really uh, take it easy, right? So, mm -hmm. so, there is, so if you're an athlete and you're very active and you're burning 3,000 calories a day, and you have a diet that you don't want to change, that's fine. But let's say three times a year, now 
you, you do this prolonged uh, fasting mimicking diet. Uh, don't exercise during those five days. There is no need to exercise all the time. This is, a, in fact, a great time to allow the body to fix itself, to mm -hmm. repair itself, you know. Uh, give it th those five days uh, and maybe a couple of days later after you finish the diet, this re regeneration moment, this refeeding moment, uh -huh. uh, is really there to, to fix things. And so, you know, for a week around the, the fasting making diet is uh, is good to uh, uh, to just focus on that. I mean, on that and whatever uh, job that you do, there is no reason to stop doing what you normally do. But there is a reason to stop, uh, let's say, exercising. In fact, uh, you're likely to pass out or to have uh, big problems if you uh, mm -hmm. exercise during a fasting mimicking diet period. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned that too. For instance, I know particularly in the realm of like weight training, um, a lot of people report that when they do take a week off or when they do what's called like a deload, um, which does involve like heavy calorie restricting and then not exercising, when they come mm -hmm. back, they often find that their strength increased. Um, and I, I would imagine it would have to do with the fact that your body's regenerating and repairing itself. Would that be, does that sound accurate? Yes, absolutely. So we now know this for mice. Uh, we're doing a clinical trial in Verona, University of Verona, on this, on the strength. Uh, soon enough, we'll have results and, uh, and uh, we'll maybe able, be able to have a, a formal answer uh, to your question. Interesting. Well, speaking of actually regenerating the body, there's a really good question in the chat from Johnny Spacer. And he asks, could a person's skin cells or fat cells be extracted, made into stem cells and inject into the body to do similar work that fasting does? What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. This is, I always, uh, uh, this is biohacking, right? So <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, people always want to go to biohacking, you know, try to outsmart three billion years of evolution. And I always say, sure, I mean, we are also doing biohacking. The fasting making diet is a, a biohacking system, but it's a respectful one, right? So it's a biohacking mm -hmm. system that works with evolution, works with tradition and history to make sure that we don't interfere uh, with the normal process. Of, of repair and regeneration. Why is that? Because you know, imagine three billion years, I, I call it three billion years of research and development, right? So it's, it's a long time, right? Mm. And now let's say you take cells from fat and you try to uh, make it into stem cells and then repair a tissue. You can do that. I mean, this is actually done for, for joints. Uh, there is a, many clinics that are now doing this. Uh, and in some cases it can be effective, right? You can solve some limited problems. Uh, let's say you have some uh, degeneration in, in some uh, uh, cartilage or, or, or some area, uh, specific areas, these stem cells taken from the fat cells, uh, they can be effective. You know, I, I, I'm not uh, familiar with all the studies in this uh, field, but I, I know that they can be successful. Um, but when you're looking at the entire body, and let's say, you know, a, a, a system that includes the, the nervous system, the brain, uh, includes the, uh, the heart, the liver, et cetera. So there is many very sophisticated, complex systems. Now, if you take stem cells and you inject them and you try to biohack your way through it, uh, you, you're probably going to do more damage than good in the overall system, right? And again, it could work for certain uh, specific purposes, but we're nowhere near trying to beat this, those three billion years of evolution. So now we have to sort of work with that and say, let's respect this, this uh, incredible sophistication. Let's say, think about, a, uh, if you go back to the wound, think about cutting yourself. And somebody says, well, uh, can, can we have some stem cells that can, can, you can just inject and so you can repair this uh, more quickly? Well, yeah, everything is possible, but you certainly want, don't want to interfere with this natural process that it's going to mm -hmm. almost perfectly repair your wound, right? Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, yes, we'll, we'll, we'll be better than that. But, uh, but again, that's probably like 50 years away. Oh, interesting. Wow. Um, so there actually is a, a question here in the chat that Zapfan Zapfan asks. Um, let me highlight that. He says... Um, uh, have you done any randomized clinical trials of this? Because uh, I really think that that might be a, an accurate way to sort of express what's happening. 
with us? Yeah, so we've done uh, multiple randomized clinical trials. We mm. have uh, several on cancer. Mm. Uh, last year, we published one on 100 uh, subjects uh, on the fast mimicking diet called Prolon mm -hmm. and showed uh, uh, lots of uh, very uh, potent results. Uh, for example, lowering the cholesterol, blood pressure, triglycerides, mm -hmm. uh, fasting glucose, uh, uh, systemic inflammation, uh, markers or risk factors for, for cancer, etc. So it works very well. Um, now we're collecting data from about two or 3,000 patients uh, and, and hundreds of doctors uh, to also look at the safety, uh, how safe is this. But uh, this has been done by, uh, I think, uh, um, you know, tens of thousands of people. And, and thus far, uh, there have been no safety concerns. And, uh, and again, the clinical trials seem to, uh, to show efficacy. We also have a clinical trial uh, that in collaboration with Charité Hospital, uh, that uh, looked at multiple sclerosis patients and uh, and that also uh, showed positive results. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, the first three or four trials that were published are all positive. Um, now we're doing larger trials with three, four, five hundred patients, and those are going to be uh, very important to uh, uh, to have conclusive uh, uh, data particularly on the disease uh, state, meaning that yeah. it's pretty clear now it's safe for, for uh, people that are, uh, that, are, that are not sick. Um, and, uh, and also it's pretty clear that it can be effective. And, um, but uh, yeah, somebody has diabetes or cancer or autoimmunities, uh, for those, we still have to do the large trials to yeah. figure out uh, if it works. and. Uh, and also, um, does it work in combination with specific therapies? In many cases, we will be combining, let's say, uh, fasting and immunotherapy, mm -hmm. or, or fasting and uh, and some of the standard of care for uh, autoimmunities.